If you thought the insults hurled between North Korea and the United States couldn't get any more ridiculous, then this week set a new standard in farce. The rogue nation sentenced President Donald Trump to death because he apparently called their leader, Kim Jong-un, short and fat. Ordinarily, this kind of behaviour would be dismissed with a chuckle. But 2017 has seen tensions on the Korean peninsula rise to the most dangerous level ever. The threat of nuclear war is real and Australia is in the sights of the North's missiles. After months of negotiations, Nine News correspondent Tom Steinfurt was given rare permission to travel to North Korea. There he discovered a country whose people are not only ready for conflict, but fully aware it could mean the end of the world. This is North Korea as it projects itself to the world. A nation marching in unison, ready to defend its leader at all costs. Do you think a third world war is a possibility here? Who knows? Our country is nuclear armed and Donald Trump is going to attack us. But tonight, we show you a North Korea you've never seen. As we head inside the world's most secretive state at a time of unprecedented tension. Who is the enemy? American Yankees. American Yankees. Wow. In the midst of a nuclear showdown that has implications for us all, Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself and for his regime. With unpredictable leaders and an escalating war of words, we will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. It is the most serious threat to world peace in decades. In the moment that you launch 10 missiles that are equivalent to 1,000 bombs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, who will survive in this world? Not Australian, nobody in the United States. The world will end as we know it. It's rare for foreign journalists to get access to North Korea at the best of times, let alone right now. Be careful with your cameras. I will tell you where you can take photos or not, okay? An ever-present team of minders carefully monitors our every move on a highly orchestrated tour led by government official Ju Jong Hyok. The problem is that most of the Western people have no idea what is going down here. They don't know the reality of our country. What is the reality? Our reality is that we are enjoying a normal, a comfortable, happy life here, and we have our own way. So I think that with single mind, we can pave the way to our final victory under the wise leadership of our respected uh, Supreme Leader Kim Jong Un. I was last in Pyongyang two and a half years ago, and the changes are striking. From new streets to grandiose buildings like the SciTech complex, which celebrates the regime's technical achievements. Full of the students who are going to read the books. At its heart is a replica of a Una rocket, a forerunner to the intercontinental ballistic missiles, which can now reach the American mainland. Of course, we are very proud of the results of the space rocket and also the, the other uh, successes in the science fields. Because it means we are developing and we are now becoming yeah, space power and that kind of yeah, economic power we are ready. Pyongyang is the showpiece capital of one of the poorest countries on Earth, home to the nation's privileged elite. But make your way out of the city and a very different North Korea is visible, one seldom seen by foreign eyes. We're on our way 200 kilometres east to the city of Wonsan, a bumpy five-hour journey through dirt-poor farmland and dark tunnels. We stop briefly at a coffee shop where the walls are plastered with pictures of North Korean missile launches. 
So are you excited when you see that they have tested yes, a nuclear that's weapon? It. That's it. It's excitement. I am. That's beyond my greatest excitement because we were weak, but now we are strong. Single-hearted unity, uh, great leadership, and we have the ICBMs. So I, I usually say to Donald Trump, "Come, come, come to me. I will choke you with my H bombs." Wow. In Wonsan, we find fishermen jostling for space to catch dinner. At random, we speak to Kim Yong Chol, who's lived here for 15 years. Donald Trump is just like a dog, barking at the moon. Immediately, he casts the conversation to politics. As you've seen on the TV reports, Trump is saying crap like he's going to kill us all. But we have our supreme leader. So even if Trump brings all his forces, even if the sky falls, we are not afraid. With its beaches and relaxed vibe, Kim Jong-un has earmarked Wonsan as North Korea's future holiday hotspot. But overseas visitors are few and far between. On the headland out there, the regime has built this huge, brand new international airport because they're actually hoping to set up a billion dollar tourism industry in this country. But given the current climate, it's no surprise that not a single passenger plane has touched down there yet. The site's not going to waste though, because while no planes have been taking off from there, plenty of missiles have been. Wonsan is one of the regime's key missile test sites. Almost 40 have been fired from this area as North Korea, or the DPRK, develops its capability to strike targets around the world. Is there anything that the world should fear from the DPRK? Because from my perspective, the thing that scares a lot of people is the fact that you are now armed with nuclear weapons. I think that not at all, no threat at all, but there is one threat. Uh, it is uh, one threat in the world. It is from not DPR Korea, but from Donald Trump. <laughs> so I think that um, we must get rid of this threat. We must get rid of Donald Trump, I think. How then do you feel when you hear Donald Trump say that he wants to destroy your nation? Donald Trump is going to turn our skyscrapers into the ashes. Total destruction of Korea. Every citizen, every member of the Korean nation is got ang has got angry. Oh, war maniac Donald Trump. So if Donald Trump did decide to attack your country, what would happen? I think that the next step will be the destruction of United States. No matter how old or young, Everyone here marches to the beat of the regime. North Korea's brightest students are rewarded with a stay at the Songdewan Children's Camp. There's plenty of fun on offer from football... Hello! ..to rowboats. They don't seem very sure of the Australian guy. But like kids everywhere, they can't get enough of video games. What are you teaching these boys? Do you teach them the technique? I teach guerrilla warfare, the tactics Kim Il-sung used to vanquish the Japanese army. What's striking is that the children also see these games as practice for war. What do you like about this game? I'm so happy to kill Americans. So you dream this is an American that you're shooting? Yankees. Americans and Japanese and South Koreans, they are the enemy of the Korean people. Time and again, we are shown the carefully staged performances of Pyongyang's most talented students. There's a rigid discipline to growing up here that's hard to understand as an outsider. At Pyongyang's Foreign Studies University, students learn English from tapes with a distinctly American accent. And now, though, our class project was to investigate some unconventional styles of housing and report on one. 
We're allowed to speak to classmates Ik Hyun Rim and Lee So Hyun, although our minders insist we avoid anything political. What changes have you seen in Pyongyang over the last couple of years? Uh, under the wise leadership of the respective Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un, uh, our country has changed into a very luxury and modern country. And yeah, in the last couple of years, there were many miracles uh, changing our country into a proper country. Yeah. And our people are enjoying benefits of socialism. But one seemingly simple question is much harder to answer. For you learning here, it you come to the foreign studies. What is it about the rest of the world that interests you so much? Rest of the world. Uh, all the other countries, you know, foreign countries. What, what, what are you interested in from foreign countries? Well, mm, that's not that simple. Um, I don't quite get you, uh, get your... <laughs> Okay, mm -hmm. but for foreign studies, you, f you study you foreign, foreign, you languages. Know, foreign languages. What, what is it about other languages, other countries that you find interesting? Mm -hmm. Should I say so? No special comments. <laughs> okay. If they say what they want, they will be in trouble. They will be kicked out of Pyongyang. If they say, oh, I don't like my leader, and then oh, North Korea is a bad country, then, no, it's going to be huge trouble for them. Sung Ju Lee knows all too well the expectations of the regime. Now living in Seoul, he escaped from North Korea at the age of 16. What would happen to you if you went back to Pyongyang tomorrow? What would the government do? <laughs> Public execution. Seriously, because I mean, I'm, I'm talking about North Korea at now, right, with you. This will be on TV. So this interview will be shown in North Korea and exactly. they'll say this man's a disgrace. Exactly, exactly. I mean, if I go back to North Korea, first of all, North Korean government maybe torture me. And then they force me to announce a certain kind of a script written by the government. You, you don't seem scared by this. Well, actually, somebody has to tell this. I mean, the truth. I mean, the North Korean government tried to hide a truth. They, they tried to hide the sky with their palm. But they cannot hide everything. Coming up, the world will end as we know it. But isn't that madness? What is the North's master plan? Just over the border from here, North Korea has more than 10 thousand rocket launchers ready and aimed the u.s military on high alert if war broke out tomorrow are you guys ready to go i believe we are and the south living under constant threat you must dread the day that you might have to actually put one of these on that's next on 60 minutes When I got to South Korea, I was so confused that people are so nice. Really? Yeah, so nice. And so, I mean, it was, it was kind of one of culture shock that I had. These days, Sung Ju Lee enjoys a freedom he never knew existed in his former life in North Korea. Since he fled the country in 2002, he's worked tirelessly to expose the hypocrisy of the regime. North Korea is a country for just 10% of total population. I can say 90% are slaves. North Korea is a country, but I can say North Korea is a prison. The regime's brutality is notorious, and not just how it crushes any sign of dissent from within. In February, the world was stunned by the brazen assassination in Malaysia of Kim Jong-un's exiled half-brother, Kim Jong-nam, with VX nerve gas. For many, it showed just how erratic and ruthless the North Korean dictator really is. What do you think of Kim Jong-un? Well, international community keeps saying that Kim Jong-un is very unpredictable. He's very irrational. 
but my perspective, Kim Jong Un is very predictable. He's very rational. In, is he smart? Yes, in terms of protecting its own regime. That's why he's, he's developing nuclear weapon. Do you think he wants war? He will not attack United States first. He will not attack South Korea first. But if South Korea and United States kind of try to use um, military option, then they will attack. With tensions rising, the US military has been stepping up its preparations for war. Just this week, there was a massive show of force by three aircraft carrier strike groups off the Korean peninsula, drawing the ire of Pyongyang. Two kilometres from the North Korean border, we joined US Marines as they honed their shooting skills gas, gas, gas. and went through drills for the possibility of chemical warfare. Well, we hear so much about the prospect of a nuclear attack. It's actually conventional warfare that's much more likely at first. Just over the border from here, North Korea has more than 10,000 rocket launchers ready and aimed at the south. And within the first few days of war here, more than a million lives could be lost. If war broke out tomorrow, are you guys ready to go? I believe we are. Regardless of the environment, uh, these Marines need to be prepared for everything. Colonel Maura Hennigan is the Combat Logistic Regiment's commanding officer. Uh, the Marines that are here today are working actually at their basic infantry skills. Every Marine is a rifleman, so uh, they have the opportunity to come out and they, uh, they shoot in, in multiple environments. There's a certain irony to this because they'd hear these gunshots in North Korea. Yep, they sure would. And, uh, and we actually get to listen every night to uh, whether it's uh, the radios that are going off or just everything that's happening right across the line. So yeah, it's not lost on anyone. With tensions on a hair trigger, there are fears the region could be tipped into an accidental war. We've come to South Korea's Yonpyong Island, just 10 kilometers from the North Korean mainland. 2,000 people call it home, with 2,000 Marines stationed here to protect them. Seven years ago, the island came under a hail of fire from North Korean artillery, killing four people and injuring 20. It followed a military exercise in the south that Pyongyang viewed as aggression. So how long have you been living on the island here for? Oh, about 30 years. For local guest house owner Song Yong Ok, it was the most terrifying day of her life. The whole town was just covered in black smoke and it was a sea of fire. It was catastrophic. It, it sounds like it really had an effect on you. Yes, it did. Not just me, but all the townspeople. South Korea has nearly 20,000 bomb shelters dotted across the country. It's like a seriously heavy door. It's not until you head inside that you appreciate how frightening it would be to have to use one. Oh wow, it's huge. This shelter is equipped to hold 530 villagers, a quarter of the island's population, for three days. It's sealed against conventional, chemical, and biological attack. We are as well prepared as we can be because we have gone through this before. You must dread the day that you might have to actually put one of these on. I hope that never happens. We've heard so many threats from Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump. Does that make you worry sometimes about your safety here? I don't feel completely safe. Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump, I'm afraid to say it like this, but they are both a bit psycho. Neither of them seem like normal people to me. Kim Jong-un, our leader, is just doing the only thing that a small country, a tiny country with 25 million people, can do to secure its survival. Its only life insurance 
is nuclear deterrence. Hello. Alejandro Carl de Banos is North Korea's unofficial spokesman outside of the Hermit Kingdom. He was my guide last time I visited North Korea. This time, I have to catch up with him in Barcelona after the Spanish government slapped him with a travel ban. We declare there will be no world without Korea. If DPRK, if North Korea is attacked nuclearly by the United States, the answer will be nuclear as well. So you'll just destroy the world? Is the United States the one that will destroy it by launching a nuclear attack or North Korea? We just answer in the moment that you launch 10 missiles that are equivalent to 1,000 bombs of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, who will survive in this world? Not Australian, not Spaniards, nobody in the United States. The world will end as we know it. But isn't that madness? The madness is the United States to try to conquer the world and try to destroy other societies. The madness is to act as an emperor and the other countries serving that emperor and contributing troops and money for the end of the world. That's the madness. Coming up, this is effectively where the battle line is drawn. A warning to Australia. They will not be able to avoid the disaster. And uncovering the real North Korea. Behind all the politics, you, I've got to know the people, and, and they are a fantastic people. High five. Go. Yeah. It's really the only time on this trip where I don't have a minder sitting on my shoulder. Yeah, I wish it would calm down, and it's bloody frightening. That's next on 60 Minutes. In North Korea... You can take photos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We visit the demilitarised zone that separated this divided peninsula for more than 60 years. There are the flags of the countries which attended the Korean War under the name of UN, following US. Here, rival soldiers eyeball one another at what's regarded as the most dangerous border in the world. This is effectively where the battle line is drawn, just about the most tense place on earth right now. At the moment, the mood here, it's deadly serious. Australia stands with the Republic of Korea in solidarity against the provocative and illegal behaviour of North Korea. Just a few weeks before our visit, the Australian Foreign and Defence Ministers stood at the southern side in a move that infuriated Pyongyang. I want to repeat some of the articles which was uh, by the spokesman of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of our country. Should Australia continue to follow the US in imposing military, economic and diplomatic pressure upon the DPR Korea, despite our repeated warnings, they will not be able to avoid the disaster. Australia will not be able to avoid disaster. Yeah, disaster. So you think that if Australia gets involved in any action against the DPRK, it will be also harmful to Australian people, I think. Our approach seems to have made us a target. I don't accept that. I don't believe Australia is a primary target. Foreign Minister Julie Bishop believes North Korea is using its nuclear arsenal to hold the world to ransom. Well, North Korea has used coercive blackmail as a negotiating tactic in the past, and it is ramping up its ballistic missile and nuclear weapons programs in order to put itself in the best negotiating position. The official government line there is that Australia is, is heading for disaster. Surely that worries you? Well, I didn't say it didn't worry me. Does it? It's an issue that we are dealing with. I just want to read you a couple of quotes from Donald Trump. He's threatened to unleash fire and fury like the world has never seen. He says he's going to totally destroy North Korea. He's called Kim Jong-un little rocket man and also referred to him as being short and fat. Is that really the kind of diplomacy you want to hitch your wagon to? It certainly has a reaction in North Korea and the trading of insults is... It's not a good reaction though, it doesn't help the cause. What President Trump's intervention has done is brought China into the discussion in a very direct way. And I believe that that will be part of the most successful strategy we've seen today. So you think that language is actually beneficial? I said 
that, I'll use my words, the language has made Beijing recalculate its strategy, its risk, and now China is deeply involved, and I believe that is beneficial. There are some lighter moments on our trip to North Korea. Another side of life here that the regime is keen to promote. Do you think I can win? Yeah, of course. I yeah, win the you look so energetic. <laughs> yeah. Today I've been invited to take part in the Pyongyang Marathon, surely one of the world's most obscure running events. What do you make of the turnout here? This one's very small. The big marathon's in April, and that had over 1,100 Western runners. This is, I think, 20. Max. Nick Bonner has run a tourism business here for more than two decades. How much of that do you think is people that are just a bit worried about the situation here? Uh, I think it's, yeah, partly that. It's also that the Americans can no longer visit, so that's 20% down. Um, yeah, and it's the current situation. It's, it's definitely hit tourism. And behind all the politics, you, I've got to know the people, and, and they are a fantastic people. Politics apart, uh, yeah, I wish it would calm down, and it's bloody frightening. After a North Korean misfire... ..we pound the pavements of Pyongyang. It really is nice just to be out. <laughs> Literally the only time on this trip where I don't have a minder sitting on my shoulder the whole time watching every move. I'm free out here for once. Hello. <laughs> High five. Go. Yeah. You can't help but feel an event like this is very much a charm offensive from a regime that's constantly paranoid about how it is perceived. Beating its chest to the outside world and subjecting its people to a never-ending barrage of propaganda. Well, we got some of it here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. They still produce this kind of rubbish? It was everywhere. Oh, my God. It's, oh. Do you mind having it like, tra Crazy. translating Crazy. some of this for us? North Korean defector Sungju Lee grew up seeing this kind of material every day. We killed um, USA and... Our target is USA, uh, this is the end of our enemy. But this is just part of their everyday life, isn't it? Growing up with this imagery of the US getting slaughtered. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is not just postcard. This is in, kind of in the, in the textbook, the textbook. In every shop window. Yeah, and, of and... course. I mean, that's, that's North Korea. That's kind of, that's kind of the, the, the way, I mean, the way to, to brainwash people. Before we go, Sungju Lee has something to show me. His two dogs, peaceful and unification. Symbols of hope that one day the two Koreas will be reunited. Sungju Lee believes if change is to come, it must be from within. If international community attack North Korea, the people will stick together around its leader and then they will fight until the last person exists. Military interven inter intervention cannot be solution, but my solution is to send information. Give them power. Give them information and then make them choose their future. So don't bombard North Korea with missiles, bombard them with information and knowledge. Yes. I mean, knowledge has power. It's, it's stronger than weapon. If there's one thing you'd like us to take back to Australia about your country, what would it be? I hope that TV Channel Line from Australia let all the people in Australia feel that uh, DPR Koreans are really peace-loving and friendly people. The nuclear deterrence of our country is not to attack other countries, including Australia. Our nuclear deterrence is to protect ourselves from the nuclear threats from US. Yeah. So usually I say to, uh, to my foreign friends that it takes a thief to catch a thief. <laughs> Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.